hear you, Eileen. Is that better? Uh, let me turn this up, see if that's the issue. I was having some issues before. That's why it took me a while to get on, but I'm all good now. Okay. All right. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> There's Eileen. Yay. Ooh. Okay. Get back. So, Lisa, uh, Melanie will be a few minutes late joining, but, um, and Nathan's having some audio issues. He looks like he's logging out and logging back in. So as soon as he is on the call, you can call the meeting to order, or if you want to wait a few more minutes, we're still expecting Melanie to join late. And um, I think that's it. Jeff okay. will not join today. Okay. Well, it is 3.30 actually now. Um, let's see here. We only have, I only see two people besides me. Right. I know so Nathan, we, yeah. yeah. So let's wait till Nathan is yeah. back so we have enough, correct? Correct. Okay. And Nathan, if you would try your audio and visual, that would be great. I saw him for a sec. <laughs> Let me get, where did that? Ah. Hi, Nathan, can you hear hey. us? Yeah, Yay, sorry. It work. Great. All right. New computer. <laughs> okay, no worries. I'm glad you're here. Um, let's see here. So are we ready, Eileen? We are. All right. I call this meeting to order. Good afternoon and happy it's March 1st. Um, so because of COVID, I have to read this, this intro. So due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders in 2520 and in 2920, which suspend certain requirements of the Brown Act and in the order of health officer of the county of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID. The Art and Public Places Committee will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom web webinar. Committee members and staff are participating from remote locations and or participating appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item number, number three, public comment, or during our comment hearing items will be able to do so by utilizing the raise hand feature or by pressing star nine on their phone. And then they will be given the ability to address the committee. The recording secretary, We'll take roll. Chair Puentes? Aye. Okay. Present. Vice Chair Keeper? Here. Member Azirian? Uh, present. Thank you. Um, member Baumgarten's partner? Sorry. Present. And member Nathanson is not present today. And Member okay. Jones Carter. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Member Jones Carter. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, she just joined Hi. us. She had to miss all the beginning of my stuff. Um, and then did Tara, did you have an announcement? Yes, thank you. Before we get started, um, I would just like to acknowledge Monica Bryant, whose term recently ended on the committee. I want to thank her for her over uh, four years of service and recognize her for her support of the arts in Santa Rosa and in the community. So on behalf of the public art program and the art and public places committee with the city of Santa Rosa, thank you, Monica, for your service. Thanks, Hara. Okay, so we're gonna move on to, um, Eileen already did roll calls. So we'll move on to public comments. If you wish to make a, um, a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you are dialing via phone, please 
press star nine, raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. Please make sure you to mute yourself when you're invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of the countdown. We have, do we have, do we have any comments from the public who wish to make comments? We on the don't have any raised hands at this time. Let's see here. If there are no pu public comments, then we'll go ahead and we'll move on to the next item. Approval of minutes. Copies of February 1st, 2021 meeting minutes have been distributed for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to these minutes? No. If not, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? Hold on. I have a correction. Uh, I noted that my last name was spelled wrong under committee member reports. So that was all. I will make that correction. Thank you. So do I have a motion to approve minutes um, with the um, Kristen, with vice chairs, Kristen Kipfer's um, corrections? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Great. All in favor? Okay. Approved as well. Minute meetings are approved with the correction. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Moving on to the next item, schedule five. Number five, scheduled items. And we have 5.1, and that's going to be the 21-22 annual work plan and recommendation um, expenditure. Um, Tara will be pr um, presenting the draft annual work plan and um, well, this expenditure plan will be for the next fiscal year, July 1st, 2021. Tara? Thank you, Lisa. Um, I'm going to share my screen so that we can follow along with the document that was attached to the agenda, um, which is the annual work plan um, and recommended expenditure plan for the year 2021-22. So hold on one moment. I share my screen. Okay, can everybody see that? Okay, thank you. Um, so this is uh, typical for uh, the public art program in early a new the beginning of a new calendar year <clears throat> to start planning for the next fiscal year, which runs July one through June thirtieth. Um, in terms of what the public art program Art and Public Places Committee will be working on for that year and the anticipated expenditures to go along with implementing that work plan. Um, this year is a little bit different because we recently um, endeavored to uh, draft and then subsequently adopt a new strategic plan for the next four years. So you will see that obviously reflected in this plan, but I'd like to go through a little bit of the process and then the individual line items that are in this uh, draft work plan and expenditure plan. Um, and then answer any questions that you might have about that or the dollar amounts. Um, so uh, like I said, typically early in the year, um, we go through a process of, of kind of looking at what we may be doing, what funds we have and what um, projects are opportunities uh, to focus on for that next year. Um, and sometimes that includes input from the community. Sometimes that includes input from um, different opportunities uh, across the city organization in terms of um, large scale capital projects where art could be included or partnerships with other divisions or departments. Um, so this year, like I said, is different because there's a newly adopted uh, strategic plan for the public art program, which really directs our operations for the next uh, four years and lays out um, the recommended expenditures or anticipated expenditures to implement the plan. So number one on this work plan is the um, first full fiscal year implementation of our strategic plan with the recommended expenditures along with that. Um, the main four categories that our strategic plan 
um, kind of grouped items in are community engagement and input, governance and administration, programming and projects, and PR and marketing. And under each of those are um, generally or, or essentially a summary of the types of things we would be doing in the implementation of this first, um, this first year of the, of the plan. So um, you will also notice some asterisks um, by some of the items. And so I wanted to call out and explain how we have kind of combined this overview of our annual work plan and the strategic plan with our normal operations and those expenses. So each year, the public art program has certain expenses for sculptural, sculpture and public art program um, or I should say public art collection maintenance, maintenance of our collection. Uh, we have um, expended expenditures, expenses for uh, ongoing contractor, contractors or consultants or temp employees. Um, we have uh, expenditures for regularly scheduled or anticipated projects, grants, commissions um, that aren't uh, specified at the time, but we know we want to spend a certain amount of money on projects each year. Um, and so those, that, that generally those are, those are shown here with the asterisks. Um, and, and those are recurring costs that we already had in the public art program. They're built into this plan this way so that you can see the whole picture of what type of work we will be doing in the next year. The reason that they um, that, that you may notice that this number of the total recommended expenditures for this next fiscal year is maybe different from what you saw in our strategic plan, um, which summarized year by year expenses for the public art program to implement the strategic plan. This is, is the, that, that, that amount for the fiscal year 21-22 combined with those regular expected um, kind of recurring uh, expenses. So um, because what the strategic plan did was essentially only put in additional costs to what the program already had. That's what it is showing will um, that the implementation plan for the strategic plan only calculated additional costs over and above what we were already doing to run the program. So that's why those numbers are a little bit different. Uh, and I can kind of go through in that in more detail if, if needed. But I wanted to call that out uh, to be transparent on that. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the projects that are called out here under programming and projects, uh, there's, there's a lot of projects that we're going to try to undertake this next year. Um, I think a lot of them will be things that are done uh, with, with partnerships that's called out as one of our approaches, obviously. Um, but we have our ongoing maintenance there. We have commissions and grants to artists, which essentially serves the purpose of um, the projects, the actual public art projects we would be doing. Um, it has the outsourced work, meaning our contractors built into it, as well as our ongoing maintenance. Um, so that, that's really the uh, main part, the, the main uh, emphasis of this annual work plan. But in addition to that, I wanted to briefly touch on a couple other items that are included. Um, under number two, artists and city planning and projects. This actually was included on last year's work plan, but last year's work plan was um, really hindered by the pandemic starting shortly, uh, shortly thereafter or yeah, shortly thereafter. So, um, so there weren't, uh, there was not much movement on this item last fiscal year, although now we're starting those conversations. So I included it on this year's, or I should say next year's annual work plan so that uh, we can really uh, consider these as, as priority items um, to consider in the public art programs um, participation. So, the two specific items that I feel like are uh, really realistic goals and projects for us to be involved in in some way, even if we don't know exactly how yet, are the two that are listed there. The general plan update that the city is just now starting, which is a process that will essentially 
create a new general plan for the city. A general plan is a, you know, a, a policy guiding document that looks at the city's future over the next 20 years. Um, and so we're looking, we're talking to the team in, with the city that is um, spearheading that effort and figuring out how we could bring an artist on board to be a part of the process of writing and developing that plan and also what public art and engagement opportunities there may be in that process. And then the other opportunity is for the San Rosa Avenue corridor plan implementation. That is a plan the city's had for quite some time and um, we have an estimated timeline of that beginning in the spring of 2022. And so there is an opportunity for an artist to come on board, potentially to be a part of the design team and or to be included in um, designing or uh, providing input for artistic components of that plan. So um, there, there's a variety of amenities that will be a part of um, that project that in, may include benches or bike racks or crosswalk um, art, uh, but there's also mural opportunities potentially uh, at the Highway 12 overcrossing. So those are two um, projects that I feel are um, uh, deserving of the public art program's involvement in a way that I think is exciting for the program to consider having an artist be brought on board as part of the team in the development of projects. Um, but we don't have a clear yet idea on exactly how that will look, what funding would be needed. Um, so I hope to bring back to this committee uh, more concrete proposals for both of those things as we move forward, but I wanted to make sure they are included on this work plan. Uh, the remaining items on the list, three, four, five, and six, are all in progress projects uh, that will continue through this next annual work plan period. And they include the Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square project, the Fifth Street Parking Garage project, the Depot Park Public Art project, and returning the Asawa art panels to Courthouse Square. So with that, I would be happy to answer any questions from the committee. Do any committee members have questions for Tara regarding this item? If so, please physically raise your hand. And just a reminder, at this point, it's questions only, no discussion. Um, Melanie? Oh, so within a category, um, so you have a heading like programming and projects, 187,500. So are we, how do we know what's in each one of those little bullet points or is it money that can move around or how does that work? Yeah, good question. Um, you can look at, let's see if I have it open. You can look at our strategic, can you still see my mm -hmm. window? Did it switch to this other document? Okay, thanks. If you look at the strategic plan in the back of the document, there's the implementation plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then there's one of the documents is the expenditure implications. And, and you can look through there um, to see where those dollar amounts um, are gonna show up. Like for instance, conduct a public art audit is budgeted at $25,000 for this next year. So that's, that would be this first bullet point line item um, and so on and so on. So you can find the numbers within the uh, strategic plan document. And then, um, and then some of the items were not included. The, the, the line item is included in the strategic plan, but the dollar amount is not because like I said before, the strategic plan only captured new costs above and beyond what we already anticipate each year. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you won't see those. So for instance, ongoing maintenance is about $50,000 a year. Um, and commissions to and grants to artists is about fifty thousand dollars a year. So, um, so I I can provide the committee with a detailed breakdown of that if you'd like to see that. But it it's all there in various places. I have a follow up question. <laughs> so, is it your feeling that we would approve this today, or do we have some time to review this? 
Uh, the request is for this to be approved today since we are putting in our budget requests uh, to the city to go through the budget process. However, if the committee needs more time um, and isn't comfortable with approving it today, we can make accommodation for that. Oh, Lisa, you're on mute. Oh, I mean, there we go. Sorry. I thought I saw some other hands. Do we have other questions? Yes. Um, I, I um, wondered, um, can I talk? Yeah. Oh, yes. I can only see okay. a little bit. Um, I was curious about you bringing up, bringing in the art opportunities for artists to come on both those um, projects to advise and to have input in design, which I love that. I wondered, um, is there money included for that already or would the money have to be, and are the other people that are involved, is their funding also included in here or who are the other people that are involved in planning? Yeah, that's a good question. And essentially, um, no, the answer is no to basically both of those. We don't, we don't know what funding is yet available and from, from the kind of host departments that are running the projects. Um, and we have not included the funding in this work plan and expenditure plan. Okay. Um, there, there are potentially some available funds from those, from those host departments or through grants um, and potentially the kind of public art fund reserves, what, what we have in the bank, so to speak, could be allocated for those future projects. Um, can I follow up with a question? Just in this, how these things work with me not knowing, um, when you're bringing an artist in, and like I'm asking about the other people that are on the commission are already doing the work or slated from other departments, assuming they're not design people, um, is like, is it a request to be, or is like, who grants that kind of access and also weight of decision-making to that artist voice? Yeah, we, we don't fully know that structure okay. yet. Um, yeah. One yeah. of yeah, one of the ideas that we have is to structure both, both projects, but in particular the general plan um, as somewhat of an artist in residence type of program where the artist is in residence um, with the city of Santa Rosa for the purpose of working on that project. Um, but what that looks like and what structure we create for that is we would essentially be starting from scratch. We have some great there are some great examples from other cities and other organizations who have done similar type projects um, that we would be looking at. But yes, we would be creating everything for yeah. fresh for us yeah. here. Yeah, excellent, thank you. Thank you. Um, Nathan, I saw you had your hand up. Yeah, could you just tell us a little bit more about the Depot Park public art? Yeah, um, so the Depot Park project was started, I believe, three and a half uh, years ago. Um, and there was funds set aside for an artist to come in and work with um, kind of work in conjunction with some planned uh, refreshing of the landscape there that the Parks Department was going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, a current contract with an artist to put in a piece of art in, in that space. Um, but because of the kind of um, the, the work needing to be done in conjunction with the landscaping was held up due to some uh, plans needed to be drawn up for the actual landscaping and, and any changes to the site. Um, and then unfortunately, we just got hit with fires um, and mm -hmm. the pandemic and it really slowed down any work that could be done on the park um, itself. So we still have an interest uh, from that neighborhood, from the Railroad Square Association, from the Parks Department, and from the artists to continue working on this project. So we have just restarted some conversations about how we might move forward now. I don't have much more to report okay. um, than that today. All right, just so I can be correct. So the funds have already been put set to the side, and they are not included in this, correct? Correct. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. For that one. Okay. And do I have anyone else have any questions for Tara? Kristen, looks like she has her hand up. Oh, Thanks, okay. Tara. Oh, she's not even, okay, I didn't even see her on here. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, first off, it's more of a housekeeping item. Uh, well, just correction of a spelling error. 
Uh, I believe under PR and marketing, that third bullet point is supposed to be launch, oh, launch. social media, not Yes, launch. indeed. Thank you. Uh, but you don't know what l- launching a social media can <laughs> I mean, I'm, I might not be up on the new hip lingo, but um, uh, my next question uh, had to do with the, under the programming and projects aspect. Uh, I, I know that it's really dog earing that money so that you know we could have further dedication uh, as needed, um, but the partnerships, um, that bullet point was a little broad for me. So I just wanted to understand uh, what could fit into that um, bucket, essentially, and um, if that is, I, I, I've heard before from uh, partnerships that we've had with Creative Sonoma, and um, I, I kind of wondered if that would be an ongoing annual amount, um, but I didn't see a bullet point next to it. So um, if it was kind of building off of that and expanding, Um, or if you had a new idea for the partnerships there? You know, I think that, let me pull this out so I can try to answer that. Hold on one second. Oops. Okay. Um, The partnerships that are called out here are really referencing the strategic plans reference to partnerships. So if you look at the strategic plan, um, in, let me find it. There's a, there's partnerships show up quite a bit in our strategic plan, knowing that it helps us leverage our resources by joining forces with, with others. So, um, I believe under, uh, the few, there, there's a few places where, where it shows up, like I just said, but I believe under I'm trying to find the right section. Just hold on one second. Um, yeah, so under, so if you're, if you're looking at the strategic plan, here, why don't I put this back up on my screen here? Okay, can you see that now? Um, mm-hmm. Under, um, Goal two, neighborhoods are infused with art and community leaders across the city champion arts programming. Under um, strategy A, bring art into ser- areas of the city, uh, then t- tactic two, leverage partnerships to increase impact. That's where that $10,000 shows up, which is what that line item is on our annual plan. Um, and really, I think that that is calling out to make sure that we are doing what it takes to partnership uh, to partner with organizations that can help us in this area and that may mean that we have um we have projects that we're partnering on but it may mean that relationship building to establish those partnerships as well so there's a couple places in this plan where partnerships are called out and the relationship building that goes along with that with some expense, with some dollar amount behind it, knowing that um, we, we wanna make sure that we are providing um, adequate support to make sure that that, that will happen. So if that's um, you know, costs for hosting meetings or if that's costs for um, uh, making sure that people can participate in the types of activities that we're planning with that partner, we wanna make sure that there's funds for that. that answer your question it does yeah and and just um further kind of stated that this is a um again dog earring of money that will be allocated towards a a use that we have set aside in our specific plan that isn't fully defined yet so there's flexibility with those dollars yes very well. well stated so essentially all of these things um, with a very, very few exceptions are new, new expenditures, new programs, new items that will need development. And so when there's a project that will be coming back or a structure for how we might be doing partnerships, those things will be coming back to the committee and potentially um, will um, be addressed per- per- perhaps through subcommittee work with the committee or, um, or other types of engagement so that we can, uh, we can get those things developed. 
Great. And I had one more question. Um, when we are um, talking about the goals of including an artist in with the general plan team or with the implementation strategies for the Santa Rosa Avenue um, corridor plan, uh, which, who, who do you think would be most relevant to send, to send oh, oh, sorry, I'm getting sorry. feedback, uh, to send recommendations for where we would like to see um, an artist's input at that stage? Um, you know, if we really like, I, I, I just think about other general plans that I've seen and I was like, oh, it was great when an artist had input at this stage. If I wanna share that with the city, who should I send that information to? Um, you know, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I think that right now we're in the very early conversation phase just with the key um, staff who are leading the project. Um, and I think there'll be a lot of opportunity um, for public input as the plan goes forward. Um, at this point, I would encourage you to work with me as we are drafting our um, potential framework for how an artist can be included in this. And okay. um, so there, there will be more opportunity for the committee uh, to provide that input as well as perhaps the subcommittee, like I said. So I think um, that right now, it, I mean, you, you are welcome to go, they have a website, they have a great website. It's called santarosaforward.com. Um, that is the new website for the general plan. And um, there may be information on there about getting involved um, just as a, uh, as the, a member of the public, um, but I, like I said, I would continue. I would encourage you and any other committee members um, to work with the process that I hope to be leading to develop um, this component of it, and then um, sharing how we may move forward from there. Great, thank you. So, Melanie, I so Melanie, what's our budget year? When does it go from? What was that budget year? Is that what you asked? Melanie, are you there? I think she asked the budget year, which is July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Did, did you get that, Melanie? Was that your yes. question? Okay, can you, you froze me? for a second. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Okay, so July 1 to July 1 of 22, is that right? Essentially, yeah. Okay. So what, so what, something that shows up in 22 on the strategic plan, why, like the uh, public art audit is showing up in 22. So why do we have all the $25,000 in there in that? Yeah. Yeah. So this, this shows you that um, when we were putting together potential costs for this, we, we split it up over two fiscal years knowing that there's probably a part A and a part B to the mm -hmm. work that needs to be done. And so over in the notes, we noted that the potential costs would include, you know, audit resources to support an actual audit, but then also opportunity and implementation support. So we divided that up uh, over two years. Okay, thank you. This is just questions, not discussion, right? Is that what you told me? Okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Do we have any other questions? I do. Oh, yes. Um, Tara, is, is it possible with like partnerships and those kind of things that we would be developing? Can those, do those have to just be individuals or arts um, professionals or can we partner with schools and other kinds of public or, or private, I guess they could be, um, bodies with a variety of ages and generations or even senior type things. Is yeah, that I, I think all and above um, are, are opportunities. I think in general, our past partnerships have been with organizations, either nonprofit or for-profit um, businesses um, mm -hmm. and, and mainly focused on you know, providing services to the community or doing a project uh, that we can leverage our resources. Um, to achieve so but but I think looking even beyond that and looking through the lens of really what we talk about in our strat, uh, strategic plan 
um, in terms of bringing arts to folks that maybe have not had the same access uh, previously and distributing some of um, our concentrated efforts away from core places like downtown that has seen a lot of art and, and reaching out to other parts of the city. So uh, I think that, that that will help direct the types of organizations and, and folks we would want to start partnering with. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one, one, one other thing, if there's no other questions at this moment, I'll just share. I forgot to add in um, some of the background for our um, the Public Art Fund itself and the, um, let's see, where is it? And just so you know, kind of like our, our the patterns of our kind of revenue uh, that come in each year as well as kind of what our anticipated balance um, is of the public art fund as we start this next year. So um, right now our anticipated balance of the public art fund by the end of this year, so by June 30th, 2021 is looking to be about $790,000. Um, that that um, kind of goes along with the revenue we see come in over the last few years are fees from in lieu um, payments. So developers who opt to place artwork on site do not pay into the in lieu fee, but they also have the option to pay their same requirement as a fee to the city's public art fund. Those in lieu revenues have been between 65 and 75,000 each year for the past few years. And then we also, the Public Art Fund also receives 1% of our capital improvement projects, city funded capital improvement projects and park development fees. And those have ranged between, well, right around 35 to 40,000 um, each year for the last few years. Um, there's exceptions to that. So like when we do a large project like Courthouse Square, those, sometimes those funds come in separately from that project's 1% amount. So sometimes there's an anomaly kind of where one year we'll get $100,000 $100, more than our average because of that special project. Um, so the way that generally the, our outlook is for, for the next four years as we're implementing this plan, we have a relatively healthy reserve in our public art fund. We have you know modest revenue coming in um, but there's kind of an expectation that we will need to be using some of the reserves each year to implement our strategic plan. So, you know, each year I'll be reporting back kind of that same information so you know kind of where our, our balance um, ends up. Um, but that that is just a kind of bigger picture view of, of how, how the budgeting um, looks. Looks like Nathan, Nathan, you had another question? Is there a way to access um, kind of information about those in lieu arrangements or do those need to be made privately with the developer in advance of any kind of yeah. city hearing? So the, the way that that program works, the Art and Public Places Committee is not involved for the most part with that pro program and with how that works. Um, uh, a, a developer who has a project that meets the criteria for needing to fulfill the art requirement, which that criteria is that it has to be a commercial project. So excluding mm -hmm. residential, mm -hmm. excluding industrial um, with a valuation, total construction costs or project valuation of $500,000 or more. And then they receive that information usually in the planning stage of their project um, as to what they, they receive the information as to that we have a requirement and what their options are. And it's usually not until right around the time that they want to receive their building permit mm -hmm. that they would then um, decide if they want to find an artist to do artwork on site for their project or if they want to um, pay the in-lieu fee instead. And, but the APPC has no role in sort of facilitating no. those kinds of things. I'm kind of, I'm trying to get a sense of, um, you know, sort of within the purview of my role as a committee member, if like, like how I can um, sort of broaden the pool of applicants to these, um, you know, opportunities. Yeah. So the thing with the private development projects is 
the city has very little to do with the selection of, of the artist for those projects. It's not a city project. Mm -hmm. So the developer can hire any artist they want, as long as they meet the criteria that's stated in city code, right. or, or they can purchase an already made piece of art, as long as it right. meets the criteria in the code. So very rarely is there a call for artists that that developer issues for their right. project. Sometimes right. they do that. That that that's not to say nobody does. Sometimes that does happen, but it's not um, it's not the norm in most cases. And and just to be totally clear, are there aren't any um, calls for submissions right now through through the city for, for projects. There is for our, park, yeah, for our Fifth Street parking garage project. Okay. That's oh, okay. all right now. Gotcha. With the deadline coming up in March. Oh, okay. Thanks. That's all. That's all I wanted to know. You're muted, Lisa. Good. Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> Do I have any other questions from committee members? If not, then Eileen, do we have any public comment regarding this item? Yes, we do. Um, Mr. Eric Frazier, I'm going to go ahead and um, allow him to talk. And um, Mr. Frazier, I will be sharing a screen for you in just one moment. Um, Mr. Frazier, if you could just confirm that your audio is working um, and that you're able to see the timer and introduce yourself if you so choose. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Sound good? Perfect. Oh, you sound perfect. Thank you. Hello, thank Mr. You Frazier. So thank you. Yes, Eric Frazier with Greater Cherry Street Neighborhood Association. Of course, we're all excited to see what projects materialize for the southwest corner of the Fifth Street parking garage. And we're wondering if it's going to be complementary to the uh, neighborhood mural that's on the northwest corner of the parking garage. But I did have some questions just about the budgeting process. So um, looking at the strategic plan, we do note that the public art audit is funded uh, coming up here. And we want to, and reading over that general plan, we got the sense that the definition of art is sort of expanding and should expand to include all sorts of different types of art assets. We're wondering if that includes like architectural uh, assets and natural assets. So for instance, our neighborhood, as well as a lot of neighborhoods that ring the downtown have an exceedingly high um, uh, biodiversity scale where you can see uh, you know, multiple types of trees and flora. Is that a consideration uh, from an artistic or from an art inventory point of view? And the same with historic um, sources of historic structures and things of that nature. I'm hoping to see a more integrated approach. I know that there was a little bit of fric friction that we had just in trying to understand our, you know, through the eyes of our neighborhood association with the execution of the mural that we have on the Fifth Street parking garage. It never seemed to show up in any type of registry to direct people into our neighborhood to see the public art that's abundant here, including the artwork that's on the junior high school, as well as uh, Hugh Fattrell's murals on his buildings and so on and so forth. And so we wanna make sure that that audit includes uh, all this uh, artwork or all these things that are um, uh, you know, valuable to our quality of life uh, within this art audit uh, going forward. So, uh, so, th so that's really important. The other issue that I wanted to bring forward was just this question about your PR and marketing efforts. Uh, I noticed that the strategic plan calls for a pretty comprehensive, uh, meaning that an omni-channel type of an approach, uh, but yet I see in the budget approval that you're really talking about social media and website and stuff like that. Obviously, it's good to have, you know, it's essential to have a good website. Social media, though, only reaches a small percentage of people. And so we really rely on that print media uh, product uh, to inform people. Perhaps by way of strategic partnerships, you'll be able to do a little bit more uh, omni-channel marketing outreach. Thank you. That's all for my comments today. I appreciate your work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. Mr. Frazier. Tara? Yes. Okay, there we go. 
Did you have any response or would you like, should we move on? Oh, did I? Tara's on mute. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> if, if the committee members would like me to address any of the questions that the member of the public asks, I'm happy to, to attempt to do so, um, or you can move on to your comments. Okay. The only one that I, well, he did, um, bring up uh, the architecture, which that would be with the Cultural Heritage um, Committee, if I'm correct? Uh, well, I think the, the question was, will architecture be included in the audit that we're doing? Um, our, our audit has not been um, uh, fully developed yet in terms of how we want to approach that, but the intention is to look citywide at all public art that has been done and using a broader lens to define public art. Um, so we want to get a sense of where all of the art is in, in public art is in Santa Rosa, whether it was city funded or not. So it would include community murals that were done outside of the public art program. Um, I do believe it would also address um, ongoing performances or cultural um, activities, traditions, things like that, that, um, uh, that are, are not necessarily traditionally included, have been traditionally included in our uh, audit or inventory before, um, and, and other types of um, art meant, public art meant for public consumption in public places. So uh, architecture has not, we have not um, addressed or decided whether or not that would be included. If, if we do include that, yes, we would definitely wanna work with the cultural heritage board or, or others to make sure we have the information we need. Nathan? Just out of curiosity, who's tasked with settling those questions of definition? Um, probably myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'd be happy to work with the committee and perhaps this is another opportunity for a subcommittee to, um, to do some work on this project. That's one of the next things once we get this annual plan approved is to start checking about how the committee wants to be involved with um, working on these projects and subcommittees might be a way to move forward with that. And that's just one more sort of broad point of clarification. How are subcommittees formed? We, I think we would be creating what we want for this committee. Um, this committee, you know, we, the, the general rule is for a subcommittee that includes members of a city board commissioner committee is that there usually are just two Member, members of that committee, uh, sorry, of the, the larger committee of APPC on a subcommittee, so as not to run into any quorum issues or Brown Act mm -hmm. violations, um, but whether or not it's a working committee with staff and committee members, or if it also includes members of the public or other members of boards and commissions, those are things we have not uh, determined, and I would be looking to see how um, other groups function and see if there's some good models we can look at. And, and, and that'll and you're tasked with kind of establishing those groups and organizing. I, I, would, I would definitely be involved with that. Um, and I, I think for to, to kick off the conversation more so perhaps at the next meeting, I would be happy to bring back um, a variety of options or structures that the city um, ha has used already that perhaps we could look at and, and then get committee input at that time. Thank you. Thanks, Nathan. And did you, Kristen? I, I would, so to follow up with Nathan's comments, uh, I, I would be interested in hearing uh, just some lessons learned or success stories from other boards about breaking down into subcommittees and mm -hmm. uh, maybe working with other uh, boards. Um, I, I know just thinking about the Cultural Heritage Board, they have a very strict adherence to identifying buildings that are uh, within a period of significance. And so that is pretty clearly defined, but I know that the Cultural Heritage Board is undergoing a, a survey of all of their properties within the downtown. And so I would like for our committee to be aware of that when it is uh, finalized, because uh, it could have impact on um, how we uh, think about art and, and potential locations or how we talk about art within the downtown as a destination.
Lisa, you're muted. Yeah. Am I still muted? Can no. you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. And do, do any of the members have any other questions? All right. So let me move on. And um, do I have a motion to approve the 2021, 2022? Oh, wait. wait. <laughs> oh, you have a question first? Or do I, are you, I just need to finish. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. okay. No, no, no. But, well, just, to, just to clarify, so a motion needs to be on the table and then discussion can occur. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, thanks, Tara. So is there a motion to approve the 2021-2022 annual work plan and um, recommended expenditure plan? So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? A second. Nathan, thank you. All right. So let's go ahead. We can have our um, discussion is now open for this item and committee members wishing to comment or discuss, please physically raise your hand. Melanie. So it would be helpful for me to have the strategic plan lined up with the budget so we can I mean, I know the document is there, but so that we can see them, you know, all at the same time um, to, as a resource um, for me anyway. Um, and I know we've done this in the past really quickly, but I, it's helpful for me to get the information in advance so that I can review it and then, you know, have an opportunity to approve it. Um, so that's something I'm hoping to see. Okay. Thank you, Melanie. And anyone else? Kristen? No? All right. Okay. So let's go ahead. And if there's nothing more that we're discussing, I would like to call a vote to approve the 2021 Annual work plan and recommendation expedient plan as presented. All in favor? All right. Got Nathan, Kristen. Okay. Um, any oppose? Do you oppose or, or uh, abstain? Yes. Oppose? Yes. Okay. Um, do we have? We have enough to pass, correct? Yes. Okay. I well, couldn't see just, it. Just to be clear, that it's a question of um, sort of waiting mm -hmm. to see the document. For me? Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, that seems reasonable to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the motion pass, passes with, that was, I didn't see everybody. I'm sorry, um, Eileen. Sorry, I, I had to unmute myself. Um, so um, I'll just do a, a quick roll call. Um, Vice Chair Kiefer? Yes, aye. Mm -hmm. Member Baumgarten? Aye. Member Jones Carter? Sorry. Oh, member, oh, you just would say, if you're opposed, you would just say nay, Member Jones nay. Carter? <laughs> and um, Member, As I'm sorry, Asdarian? Mm, aye. Thank you. So the motion passes. And did you call Chair Puentes? Oh, I am so sorry. Uh, Chair Puentes. <laughs> Aye. Okay. So the motion passes. Uh, I, I would be happy to provide that documentation that you're seeking, Melanie, um, so that I can share that with the rest of the committee as well. So you can okay. see those numbers lining up. I'd, okay. I'd like to see them also. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, of course. I can send that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let's see here. So next item on the agenda, 5.2, project updates. And Tara will present updates on the current project. Okay. I just have a few very brief updates today. Um, obviously, we've been busy with, um, with, lots, with lots of things. Um, 
But uh, just to give you um, the latest information about the Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square project, we are still working to finalize the artist services agreement with the selected artist for that project and to make sure that that's approved along with all of her insurance documents. Um, then the call for artists for the Fifth Street parking garage is still open. The deadline to apply is March 15th. Um, we have a direct URL set up for that if you'd like to share with anyone. It is srcity.org slash Fifth Street Garage Art. Um, our regular scheduled conservation and maintenance uh, is continuing uh, with some regular cleaning and waxing of some bronzes we have in our collection, including Daphne at City Hall. We are also cleaning uh, the Hangover 2 piece in Juilliard Park, which was um, tagged recently and also has a lot of bird droppings on it. Um, one of the exciting things that come out of comes out of shelter in place and all, all the fun virtual world we, we live in now is that we have uh, transitioned our annual national arts program to an online virtual format this year. So the 18th annual national arts program in Santa Rosa is online. You can check it out on the Inside Out There website. You can find it from the main page of insideoutthere.com or you can go directly to the page by going to insideoutthere.com slash national dash arts dash program. <coughs> so Jessica Rasmussen, our um, contractor who does all of our citywide arts programming um, has taken this on um, and we received, I believe a little over 200 participants this year. I think there's a, actually 198 um, actual participants. Um, so each artist submitted a digital image it is all up on the website, um, organized by classification, ranging from professional artists to youth artists. Um, there are also uh, this year's award winners listed on the page, um, which go first place, second place, third place in each classification, as well as a best of show award as, and an education award for a youth entry. Um, we are not having our traditional awards ceremony like we normally do, but we are trying to figure out some online offerings that we could provide um, while the show is up for the next two months, um, whether that's some kind of like artist talk back or discussion, panel discussion with, with um, the award winners. Um, I would also like to thank Anne, our new committee member for being one of the judges this year. Um, she worked with fellow judge Rima Markian to um, look at all of the entries and come up with the uh, award recipients. So thank you, Anne, for your participation. You're welcome, it was fun. I believe those are all of my updates for today. Can I have one question? You're, you're muted again, Lisa. But yeah, yeah, sure, Ann. Um, the question was on the um, Fifth Street parking garage. I remember we were talking about it before that you could be, you wanted Sonoma County artists and I had someone from the Bay Area that asked me about it. Um, just the, not even knowing I was on this committee, just if I knew anything about um, if we would be supporting people that actually could drive here to work on it, but wouldn't need, I knew lodging was an issue, didn't want to supply that. Is yeah, there the, strict, is, I just wanted to know, what did, are they gonna the, find? Yeah, the eligibility is North Bay, um, or nor, I think it says Northern California. So it's pretty broad. It's okay, not good. just Sonoma yeah. County. We were encouraging Sonoma County artists to apply, but it's open to a much broader regional area. Awesome. Thank you. Go ahead and move on. Okay. So let's see here. That's number six, committee member reports. Do any committee members wish to make a report at this time? If so, please raise your hand. Any reports out there? All righty. <laughs> and we'll just move on to department reports. Tara, do we have anything for department reports? I do not have any tonight, thank you. All righty, so there's none for there. Then that means an adjournment. 
So the next regular meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee is scheduled for, wait a minute here. What was that date? We should have had that right on there. And that was, had that. I believe the next meeting would be April 5th. Okay, there we go, April 5th. I just wanted to make sure that that was it. I should have had that on there. Okay, so we got April 5th, 2020, and it will be at 3.30. Meeting is now adjourned. Nice to see you all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, it's good Bye. to see everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, too. Well, you know what? I did have a question. Other than Melanie, I don't know if we can ask you or not, or what Melanie was regarding. I was slightly confused and it just came to me after. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask it now since the meeting is adjourned and stuff, but what it was when Melanie was asking for the um, breakdown, uh, was she referring to the what we received on Thursday or Wednesday from Eileen or the other person that was there, the draft? Um, I, was... I Yeah, I, I understood that you were requesting additional information so you could compare the strategic plan um, budget estimates hand you know hand in hand or line in line with correct the correct your plan which i can provide and send to the committee my only question is whether or not i'll be able to provide that to you um, as a follow-up to this meeting and attach it to this meeting's minutes or if we have to wait until the next public meeting to share it because it has to be available to the public as well so i will find that out and let you know when i can get it to you okay that be broken down up by dates too, or just by when we're spent when the are just by projects. Because I know we well, had our date, plan. Yeah, the date would be just for this fiscal year, one one fiscal year at a time. But it won't be broken down within that year and months or anything else. We don't okay. have that information yet because we don't know right. um, the timeline for each project. Okay, that's I pro I probably figured that. So yes. Okay, Coolio. <laughs> <I'm good then. laughs> okay, thank you, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.